Okay. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? Hi, Liz. Good. Yourself? I'm good. You know, I want the weather to get warm. One day it will. But other than that, the real estate yes. is hot, though, right? It is hot. That is enough to keep us warm for a very long time because it is so hot. So not, um, and it's not just our area, it's the entire country, but it is definitely a hot seller's market for sure. And um, there's just not enough inventory. There's so many buyers out there. Everybody taking advantage of this, these like um, super duper low um, rates for their mortgages. And why would you not? Because um, just insane. Mine's so cheap right now. It's crazy. Yes, it's just insane. So, if anyone has even considered or thought about selling their house, this, I mean, I'm thinking about selling my own house because of it. Because like right now is when you're going to get like the most money. Right. And I'm like, how long is it going to go on like this? It can't, like, because prices are getting so crazy. There's some parts of the country that people are literally bidding a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars over asking and it's all cash and it's crazy crazy yes it is very crazy especially those the appraised values are going up too which is a wonderful thing but you know if, you, if you're looking to sell you're absolutely right this is the time you're never it's going to your house definitely would suggest that let me come over and do a CMA, no strings attached. We'll just look at some numbers. All right, so wait, so listen, let me ask you something. Yeah. You know, seller's market, right? Just so. Yes. What does that mean though for, you know, average Joe buyer? Okay, so for sellers, awesome. Buyers, mm, let's, you know, it's, it's very stressful. It's a stressful situation anyway, without it being this kind of market. Mm -hmm. um, but, you coming in if you're not putting 20 percent down and things like that um if you're just like you said you know the normal average person buying a house it can be very stressful so i pride myself in being a pretty good at winning bitty moors um how'd you do that miss amanda yeah so not in this market and when it was a seller's market, not as crazy seller's market but i just um so I have my own little techniques and I talk with my buyers about the best moves that they can do. Um, I just position them in a way that puts them ahead of everyone else. And um, if buyers want to know what those are, then they'll just have to work with me and win bidding wars with me. So there you go. So here's my question to you. Um, yes. You had two recently, right? The two, two bidding wars that you won? Yes. Yep, okay. I did. And, and do you want to close? One closed already. One closed already. That one was, um, that one we did, um, I think we were up against 11 people. The place was gone with, like had, I don't, 11 offers within the first 24 hours. Um, and actually even these clients weren't even thinking about Rockland. We'd been looking in Westchester and then I'd shown them some stuff over here and they just fell in love with this house. So. Um, you get a lot more bang for your buck over in Rockland in terms of taxes to taxes are so much lower on this part. Yeah, you do. Um, you know, they're so they looked and then but the, again it was more so just say, you know, I tell people when we're looking, you know as soon as you walk in the front door before you even see the rest of the house. It's like I love home. it if you believe it. You, like you have this magical feeling and you just know and that's what happened with this house. So um so right, they so did not was so we didn't put it around we didn't mess around with um, putting in bids. I know it's very hard. Everybody wants to deal. Nobody wants to do full price. Nobody, nobody wants to do over, but that's just what the market is right now. So if you're serious about a house, you have to be like, okay, what is the amount that I would pay for this and no more? And if I don't get this house, I can go to sleep and not regret it. Because you don't want to lose a house over like a couple thousand dollars and be like, oh, I or even 5,000 because with the interest rates so low, when the interest rates were in the uh, mid threes, low fours, mid threes, every $10,000 um, is equal to $50 difference in your mortgage payment. So oh you look at it like that, you're like, okay, so an extra $10,000 really isn't actually costing me that much yeah, more. Cheap money. Yeah. So then 
if you take the, the interest rate down um, what they are now, so it'd be even less than $50 a month that you'd be losing that. I think, and so today's date, we're recording this on March 4th. The last time I checked rates were like three and a quarter. Um, they oh. Popped, yeah, they popped up a tiny bit. They did. Okay, so it's still it's around $50. So, you know, but again, it's still historical lows. We're still in historical lows. So, yeah. you know, you're asking- So that's one way I comfort my buyers, especially new buyers. Because uh, again, nobody wants to pay over. But if it is the house, because you also don't want to chase a ghost. And if you lost it over a measly $25 a month or something like, because you, right. you know, could have done $5,000 more. And then right. of course, I don't want anybody overpaying either. So <laughs> I check and make sure the CMAs and stuff like that. Is that it's going to appraise because if it's not going to appraise, then you have to also prepare your buyer for okay, if, especially if there's like, oh my gosh, let's go like some big number over. Like, you don't just advise that because if it doesn't appraise, then your buyer is going to have to come up with that extra money it didn't appraise for because the seller exactly. does not have to down to the appraisal price, they don't have to. And I've had that happen with sellers as well, right? But remember something too if something doesn't appraise. Um, for buyer A, it's not going to appraise for buyer B. So on the seller side, you have to also caution that not to turn around and take these, you know, great offers that are, you know, so much over asking because right. that appraisal will be out there. And if it's a, if it's an accurate appraisal, the next buyer that has the an offer in over isn't going to take it either. So you know, it, it's a lesson on both sides of the of the um, definitely. And on the seller side, when when choosing, when you have all these um, bids that are coming in, also the important thing is who are they approved by? Because if you're getting an appraisal that's even, it could even be from Jersey or maybe just ten miles away. This appraisal will do appraiser will do things differently and not necessarily know what our neighborhoods what they're doing. So being pre-approved by someone locally is a big deal. I've had sellers where we've actually taken less money before because of who they're approved by just knowing that things are going to be smoother. We're not going to have a problem with appraisals. We know that it's going to go to the closing table. So on both sides, I mean, there's so many moving pieces and that's why it's very important to have a educated real estate agent that can help you guide through whether you're a seller or a buyer. Right. So the, I do have a question for you. Um, yeah. Two deals that you got approved you know, yeah. that you won the bidding war on. Were they local lenders? Yes. I always, um, I have right now someone who has chose a lender because they went online and they're somewhere out in Missouri. And yeah. but I called this lender. I was like, okay, how do you do this? How do you pick your, like, but I am still a little bit worried. Um, and I really tried to, and I had them talk to the local, but at the end of the day, it is the buyer's decision and the seller's decision the too. We can, we can all like that, lead the horse to water. Right. You know? right. And it's not like local, or like out of town lenders can't get things approved. But in a competitive market like this, you want to use every advantage that you can. So you do. We have to think of. All right. Yes. You clearly know your real estate stuff. My oh, thank you. So I have a, another question. Yes. Why are you with Keller Williams? Why am I with Keller Williams? Well, first, I would have to thank Andrew Rowan because we oh. used to go to church together and every Sunday he would bug me once he found out I had my real estate license and then I was about to reactivate it um, and talked my ear off about Keller Williams. I'm like, Ugh. but then I started actually listening and then I made a meeting with the wonderful team leader who She's still with us, Jen Mallory. She's Yeah, Jen, when Jen and yeah. now we have a wonderful team leader yourself. Oh, um, so what was great was what what I loved, two things that made me look further into it and like really get serious about it and, and actually make the next step to talk to Jen about coming over was one, the profit share. I love, so what the profit share is, for those watching that don't understand, know what profit share is, is when you come into Keller Williams, you have to name a sponsor. 
And so the sponsor is the person that you, you know, hopefully they take you under the wing and guide you and things, especially if you're, you're new and you need help and, or they Kellerize you. Um, so when you own a Keller Williams franchise, the owner has to give up. It's about 48% of her, their, his or her profit to their agent. And how this happens is through the profit share where I'm your, let's say you pick me, I'm your sponsor, you do your first deal, and then I get some kind of a percent off of it, but it's not from you, it's from our owner of our company, because wow. they give it back and it's investing back into um, the agents. So right. profit share, the other thing I loved about profit share too is so you build your tree, no, it's not a pyramid scheme, everybody's like, eh, it's not a pyramid scheme, it only goes so deep so that there's actually money for everybody, and it continues to grow. And it's willable. So Lord forbid something happens to me. Um, my children can inherit whatever this is. And it also, um, and hopefully I live some long, happy life. And when I'm 80 years old, if Keller Williams is still going around, which I do believe it will be. Um, I can be sitting on a beach with my cabana boy. Just, you know, having money come in from the great people that. Yes, very good. Well, listen, I think that, you know, you, you explain that very well. I One of the things that I always say when I'm talking to agents is, wouldn't you like to make more than 100 percent? So, yeah, you know, and, and the profit share is the way it happens. So I, I have also one thing I also love. I love their the values is um, that it's God, family and then work. So my father, I'm from Kentucky originally, um, Bible Belt, my dad walks around the New Testament in his um, pocket all the time. So he's he's very um, godly and he's, uh, his, my whole life it has been, he used to have a hat in the car, whatever, it says God, family, friends. So it's almost the same, God, family, because, you know, family and friends can be the same line and uh, work. So I love that they, in, I like, I love the value of that right. too. It's a value in our principles. Because yes. For me, it's a win-win, right? Win-win or no deal. So the culture in our company is what, yeah. to me, separates Keller Williams from the rest. And yeah. describe two of those tenants perfectly. So. I yes. I, I, yeah. I love how they have you work on yourself and by you working on yourself makes your business even better. So like you get like, really in get to know yourself as well and it's not just all about business they want you to be healthy as an individual and your family and everybody to be happy so that's what i like i like they care kw cares and that's right it does all right mm -hmm. thank you so much go sell some houses would you you're welcome you got it all right thank you bye bye, -bye.